I'm serious, and he just left me there. I'm telling you, he bought a frickin' space shuttle, and now he won't return any of my calls. Uh-huh. Very funny, Larry. Drake can't afford a space shuttle with just ad revenue. Also, how did you get this phone number? Look, all you have to do is just wait until Elon Musk takes credit for the engineer that built a space towing system in a hundred years. What? One hundred years?! See, it's not that long. Can't dragons live for like 10,000 years or whatever? You're kidding me. Look, I'm begging you, you have to- And I know just what you could do with that spare time. You can play Raid Shadow Legends. You know what Raid is. And if you don't know what Raid is, what, have you just been living under a rock? How are you even watching this video? I I'm genuinely curious. Sick of looking for games on Roll20? Only to get stuck with a neckbeard who tries to have his DMPC make out with your character. You could instead be stomping the Demon Lord with your group of poison-slinging high elves. And speaking of teams, you can make the party of your dreams with hundreds of champions to choose from. And put them to the test in the Doom Tower. Each floor of the tower is one hard-fought battle after the other. And in order to climb to the top to get the best rewards, you're gonna need a whole army of champions, with a slew of different abilities, in order to deal with tough bosses like the Scarab King, just waiting to destroy an unprepared group of heroes. Which isn't you, obviously. Because when you download right now and log in, you can grab the legendary support champion Deliana for free. If you log in for seven days between now and July 20th, newcoming players can use the promo code MYDELIANA to get a whole boatload of silver and 50 XP brews to get Deliana to max level. And in addition to the Doom Tower, look forward to new skins for Trunda Guilt Mallet later this month, brand new legendary champions, and a brand new event based on the summer solstice called the Path of Light where players can be able to explore three branching paths to get the rewards they want the most. So what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen and get a free epic champion, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, an experience boost, and an ancient shard to summon another champion. And all this treasure will be waiting for you here in your inbox. Did you get all that, Larry? Larry? Huh. He must be downloading it right now. How do you get cell reception in space? My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to The Crow's Perch, where each week we dive into terrible tales of tabletop tragedy. And today, I will recount to you, my viewers, one of the oldest and most terrible of them all, the Saga of Craig. So, hold your waifu body pillow close, take a sip out of your bird up coffee mug, and strap in. Because this story is going to be one hell of a ride. So, without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive into the first chapter of this story. This is a story from a few years back when I still studied at the university. My gaming group consisted of a mix of study mates and older friends all aged in their early to mid-twenties. The group was great, and it still keeps together nowadays, about eight years later. Well, except for one guy. A classic that guy, with a particular lack of self-awareness. This is the story about the many red flags he raised, and him ultimately leaving the campaign. The first big campaign we played together used the Anima Beyond Fantasy system, a niche and kind of obscure Spanish TTRPG that is basically high fantasy on super cocaine. Highly recommended. We still play it. I was the storyteller, and had four players. Charlie played a surprisingly deep barbarian from the far north, with a penchant for eating raw birds occasional cannibalism, and hacking people to pieces with war axes. The second player, Jacob, rolled a hardcore survivalist and martial artist from a jungle country that acted as the grown-up in the group. Jacob was probably the greatest player in the campaign, and his character went through an amazing evolution. But that is a story for another time, and definitely another sub-forum. Thirdly was Jake that played a circus runaway wizard psychic. 
Yes, that is a thing. And it's awesome. Ved accidentally killed himself in an arcane mishap. Jake eventually re-rolled a crazy elven wizard, which was great. Anyways, the fourth player was Craig, the focus of this story. He rolled an upbeat, chi-wielding eastern monk that dripped of shonen protagonist material. I think his catchphrase was screaming, SPRINGTIME OF YOUTH! from the top of his lungs, and doing an obnoxious fist pump. Most of the time, Craig's character was fine, but along the road, Craig and his character started showing their true selves, much to the horror of the gaming group. The campaign started in a typical high fantasy fashion, the player characters being sold as slaves together, in some remote shithole of the world. I think I even warned my players that an Elder Scrolls opening was coming, so they should prepare themselves for starting at absolute zero. The four players were captured, along with two NPCs, that would both become integral to the overarching plot. An old former priest, and a young sorceress. Now, this was the first session of the campaign, and from what I know now, the time the first red flag came up. Said sorceress, named Rei, was from an eastern land described in the setting as not Japan, during the feudal era, with magic and katanas everywhere. As a result of her upbringing, again, inspired by the time period that the eastern country emulated, she was very submissive, polite, and timid. Immediately after I described her, Craig had this strange look on his face and he immediately had his character scoot over to try helping her, more or less ignoring the other fellow captives. Anyway, the group managed to overthrow the crew of the slave ship, and took it for themselves. The group went on loads of adventures across the seas in their stolen slaver ship, fighting big bad evil guys and chthonic horrors left and right. Things were going fine, and we had loads of fun. With time, Craig's character's affection for Rey kept growing, and eventually it became mutual. Romance and all that was a natural part of the campaign by design, as it encouraged proper role-playing and character growth. I would say we handled it quite well compared to all the other horror stories I've read here. Rey and Craig's character became intimate, which made Craig exceptionally happy. In between games, he wrote all these kinds of novels about his character's affection for Rey and sent them to me. Unsuspecting of things to come, I graciously applauded his dedication to the game. At one point, Rey was separated from the group for an extended amount of time. Craig was, expectedly, upset with this. He became increasingly quiet between sessions and did all sorts of odd things in character. On the top of my head, I remember him once yelling out of character at another player that he wanted to carry an unconscious nubile girl instead of him. Jake, which played said character, just went, uh, sure dude, whatever, and handed over the unconscious girl to Craig. It was as weird and as awkward as it sounds. Eventually, Ray came back to the group and had undergone quite a radical transformation for reasons I will not go into here. Her personality, formerly submissive and timid, had become sarcastic, extroverted, and at times quite abrasive. This did not sit very well with Craig, and he was noticeably upset by this evolvement. After this point, two parallel stories unfolded, one in character and another out of character. In character, Ray and Craig's character just grew apart. Craig's character ignored Ray, and their relationship just fizzled out by lack of mutual interest. Such things happen. That's life. The more interesting story is how Craig handled it out of character. He became increasingly antagonistic towards Ray, yawned, rolled his eyes, and making remarks whenever she did or said anything. I remember him saying, Can't she just shut the flock up? out of character at one point. The group tried to ignore his strange behavior the best it could. The strangeness became even more apparent since the problem with Ray's transformation was limited only to Craig. The other players found Ray amusing, funny, and a bit sad at the same time. 
In other words, her inclusion in the story was still appreciated, and they thought she was a great character. But for Craig, his love turned into bitter hatred for his lost waifu. After some time, he decided to switch character. In an effort to cut away the no doubt strange concoctions of feelings he was having about Rey. Still, even with the new character on the table, he could not bear the sight of her. His hatred doubled when he found out that Rey had moved on from Craig's shonen hero character that had also physically left the group and became involved with Jake's crazy elven wizard. Out of character, Craig was incredibly angry and upset about this. We, as in Craig and myself, spent god knows how many hours talking about the issue, trying to find some way to solve it. Or at least I tried with my non-existent degree in psychology. It felt like I was giving actual relationship advice to Craig, which was incredibly bizarre and a bit distressing at the same time. The new character did not last long. Craig decided to leave the group for personal reasons and not having enough time to roleplay. After leaving the campaign, he told me that he felt personally betrayed, especially for me giving away Ray to Jake. At this point, I was pretty fed up with his obsessive rants, but did not want to antagonize him any more than necessary. I kinda just said that I was sorry that things turned out the way they did, but that one should be careful to separate character from player. Let's just say that Craig didn't qualify for the national team of separating persona from person. To point out, there was no obstacle for Craig to continue pursuing Rey in her new and improved version. I had half expected him to get to know the new her, but I think that he felt like it was too much of a chore, as he had already won her and didn't want to bother doing it again. But I digress. I can't really say what was going on inside his head. Anyways, that was the long-winded story about my problematic player Craig leaving the campaign, which lasted for about another two years before concluding in his absence. There are more stories of Craig being that guy, his ultimate meltdown that ended in him quitting the group and renouncing his friendship, his own bizarre campaigns, and many other weird tales. TLDR, player becomes smitten by an NPC and freaks out when said NPC undergoes radical personal changes, spirals into madness as player obsesses over NPC out of character, and eventually leaves the campaign, feeling personally betrayed by the loss of his waifu. Your D&D character is like your lens, like a camera or a window. You can see through it and experience all of the things they do through this lens. But at the end of the day, they aren't you. You've never had to lug 300 pounds of loot into a magical black hole bag, or have been stabbed over 50 times by goblins and ogres. It's okay to get emotional when they get hurt, or angry when the big bad evil guy escapes right through their clutches. But at the end of the day, you're going to wake up in your bed, not in a tavern in Neverwinter. Craig couldn't separate himself from his character, and ultimately suffered an imaginary heartbreak that he took just as seriously as a real one. Don't let your waifu ruin your lifeu. Next time, we'll be diving into part two of the Craig saga as Craig dives headfirst into running his own game. And as you can imagine, it doesn't end well. But it does end well for my patrons, like our Counts of Quills, like Shark A, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drizil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Cookie Spooks, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, Kirito Kazuto, and Netscape Navigator. You asked me on the day of my daughter's wedding uh, uh, about the Baron's Beaks, like Jesse Shodell, Kunto Sweezel, Moet is Mao, Chunky Salsa, Tech Blog, Currister, Cardaspawn, Gentle, Lord Rand, Gibba Woods, Wormy, Matthew Moquini, Dan of the Drake, Mickey Yeatley, and of course, I would never forget, Anya. Since this story is about an anime waifu, I'll do my own anime voice for the Dukes of Feathers.
Like the Forgotten Druid, Jared Sewer, Blues Otters, Jared Zemlin, General Constantine Chase, Happy Rex, Doc Salty 96, and of course, uh, Acroth. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel, and I'll see you next time. As the Crow Flies.